three. Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. She, Her name is Susan Taylor, and she is a transformational mindset coach and facilitator, and she works with people, helping them create a healthy, safe space in their working environment. And today I'm going to give the, the stage to her because she has such wonderful advice and things to share that you're going to find very useful in any working environment, in any business. So keep your ears open, listen and learn because she has a lot of advice to give and it's very valuable. So Susan, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Oh gosh, thank you so much, Stacey. I really feel very privileged for the invitation to be with you. And um, for myself, I started my own business when I was 28 years old for some of the same reasons that you just mentioned in your um, wonderful introduction. I felt like there was something really missing, especially in the corporate business arena around humanity and treating each other in ways where we could feel that we were valued, seen, and heard. Um, and you mentioned the word safety, safe space, creating safe cultures where we could actually be human with each other in yes. ways where we can learn and expand, as opposed yeah. to having it be a, a determination, if you will, of you know right. our work environment and, and the things that we might get promoted into. Right. I think it's it's so important, you know, for us to, you know, when we work in with the, especially in the corporate world or any business, you know, mm -hmm. any practice, you know, any place that you work, you really need to feel valued as an employee. And I feel like the boss also, the person in charge, the manager, the supervisor, the CEO, they really have to show a good example. You know, people, employees should not be afraid to come to their, their supervisor, the person in charge, and share with them, you know, um, how they feel. If they're uncomfortable with something or something, you know, bothered them, they should be able to talk to their supervisor or manager or CEO and explain to them what went on you know, how that made them feel and is there anything that we could do about it for the future? And there, you know, that is something that a lot of people are afraid to do. And I think sometimes too, you know, a lot of bosses are recognizing that they need to communicate better with their employees, you know, and they recognize that, you know, sometimes they may be too demanding or they may just, you know, they may give orders and instead of trying to teach and trying to, you know, be a mentor to them and, and give them good advice and, you know, encourage them and praise them for their good efforts. Now, I know that, you know, you, you, you're, you're very strong about having a healthy culture, having good communication, a healthy environment and a good, safe workspace. Can you tell people a little bit more and go more into depth about that and the importance of it and why we should have that in every working environment? Absolutely. I really appreciate the question because for me, culture is foundational so much so that I actually see it as a value. And I'm not just talking, um, about the culture within the organization per se. I'm also talking about our inner culture. Yes. Right. And how our own beliefs and mindsets play roles in how we interact with each other. Because I think, yes, the boss um, could be, uh, become a mentor. And as part of that, we need to be mentored yes. to try to shift, I think, some of the beliefs that um, typically and still exist in many um, organizations and businesses. Uh, people don't necessarily see this idea of mentorship as a way to help use working environments as vehicles for growth and development personally. Right. And then on the other side, you know, the employee um, helping them to learn about things that um, they grew up with, that they still hold in ways that um, could help them maybe be, feel less fearful in yeah. how to, you know, speak to someone that they would consider to be an authority, for example. Right. So mm -hmm. those cultures are so, so important. And you mentioned a couple of words that perked my ears. Uh, you talked about listening. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we all think we know how to do. And actually, myself included, can learn a lot more about how to listen. Yeah. Because we're taught to have the answer. And we're mm -hmm. taught to have the answer quickly, especially in business, right? Like that's what we get paid for. We right. get paid to know what we're an expert in. And we do those things. And yes. we get a paycheck. Yes. Um, so most of us listen to reply. That was a quote, I think, by Stephen Covey, that most of us listen to reply, not to understand. Yeah. So if I have like the next sentence in my head as I'm listening to you, how mm -hmm. can I be listening to you? Right. So for me, it's really about 
getting that fundamental um, learning around how we listen and listen so that we're trying to fully understand other as yes. opposed to project ourselves or our answers or what we think we know onto another person. Right. And that's going to require slowing things down in a world that it's incredibly busy um, and, yeah. and accelerated. And it also requires silence. And one of the things I like to share in this regard with, with the respect to listening is the word silent and the word listen in the English language contain the same letters. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> No, no, I don't think so either. It's pretty remarkable. You know, I, I really feel that, you know, a lot of times, you know, you know, there, we have a lack of communication or even like, um, understanding how to communicate with each other, each other in a healthy manner. I believe that, you know, we can get the same, we can get the same message across if we say it in the, in the right way, you know, sometimes it's just, it's just rephrasing the sentence and just stopping and thinking for a moment, how can I get my message across in a healthier manner where people are going to actually listen and not tune me out or not fear me? Because I think a fear factor too plays a big role in, in businesses too, is that the employees are fearful of their supervisors or the people in charge and, you know, I think it's really important that, you know, we try to get rid of that fear and try to be a community versus trying to have authority, the authority figure, I'm in charge and, you know, this is the way it should be. And I want this done by this time. That just causes stress on the employees. And when the employees are, are under stress, I don't think they can do as good of a job because they're constantly thinking, oh my God, I have to get this done. I have to get this done. And, you know, I think that could damper, you know, even the profitability, the community itself, that, you know, there, that safe space, I don't think is, is such a safe space anymore. It's more of a, a fearful environment that you're not going to be looking forward to, you know, going to each day. Exactly. And to build on that a little bit, if I may, because it's such an important point, um, at least from my perspective, especially given that we're working now in these remote ways most mm -hmm. often through Zoom, like what we're doing right now. Right. And engagement, employee engagement has always been something um, that uh, has been pretty low, especially here in the US. Yes. And uh, the Gallup poll is, is um, a poll that measures these sorts of things every year. And I just read a month or so ago that um, disengagement is mm -hmm. up even higher than it's ever been. Oh, really? Yes. So employee engagement is key. And so I think listening definitely fuels engagement, but also how are we going to engage when we're not physically together anymore, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Especially when we have situations where like we could turn our video off or yeah. and kind of hiding behind not being on the video and maybe even multitasking and doing some other things yeah. while people are participating in, in the Zoom meeting. And so I think it's really important. And one of the things that I like to do with my clients is brainstorm different mm -hmm. ways that we can engage more intentionally with people, especially because most of our interactions these days are electronic or digital. Yeah, and I think that's a great idea is to mind store and to get everybody involved, make everybody feel mm -hmm. like they're a part of something rather than just being told what to do, but making everyone a part of it and and, and showing value to each, each suggestion, even though you might not be able to use that suggestion or it might, it might not apply to, you know, well with what you're trying to accomplish to still give praise for just coming out and being, you know, courageous enough to come out with the idea, you know, and right. reward them in some way, you know, we thank you. That's a great idea, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then, you know, and then just gear the conversation to wherever direction you want to get, get it to. I love that. And for me, I think it's also about honoring people where they are. I think oftentimes, yes. especially when we go into, let's say a meeting, let's say we're having mm -hmm. a zoom meeting and there's, I don't know, maybe a dozen people right. in the meeting. What's one of the first things we do? We go right to the agenda. And we mm -hmm. tick off the different topics that we're going to cover in the next yes. hour. Right. But what if we could just pause for a minute and instead relate with each other first? So that's one yeah. thing that I do a lot with, uh, with my clients. I teach them about what we call the check-in and mm -hmm. the importance of what it means to check in with each other at the relational level first, before we go into the agenda items. Because right. if we go from me to it, the agenda items, 
we miss out on the we, which is the trust builder. Why? Because it's about building relationship with me and someone else, which forms that we. Yes. And as part of that, also honoring people where they are, because we don't ask enough times when someone's, let's say again, using the example of not being on the video on a Zoom call. Why? If they haven't put a message in the chat, like be right back or, you know, chat etiquette now we have, (laughs) Um, (laughs) we should be asking questions and learning about, well, you know, actually I'm really introverted. I'm feeling shy to be in front of this group of 15 people. I I need to be off video, but my gosh, if I knew that about a person, do you see how we can engage more deeply when we just understand them more? Yeah. 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 So what would be some of your um, suggestions on how to build a healthy, safe environment where people, you know, have a, a safe, you know, culture and, a, and good core values. And, and like you said, that safe space, you know, with a healthy mindset, um, how, you know, what are some of the, the uh, steps that people could take to build that community within their business? Absolutely. So first and foremost, it's something I think we mentioned earlier. It's it's really um, to make your values a mm-hmm. priority. And if you don't have values, create them. Yes. Create a set of organizational values because those values are going to remind us about the behaviors that we want to elicit as we're mm-hmm. working together. Right. So for me, values are fundamental, fundamental mm-hmm. And um, don't create them in a way where I've seen a lot of companies in the past, again, before uh, the pandemic and before the lockdown, when we would be in office buildings all the time, you know, you walk in, there's this gorgeous lobby and there's the values on a poster on the wall. (laughs) That's not what I'm talking about. (laughs) Although it's a nice reminder, how are we incorporating those values into every single interaction in the business? Yeah. Yeah whether it's meeting together, building our strategy, our growth platform, whatever we're, yeah. we're doing at the moment. So how do we take the values, what they represent for us and bring that in from a place of being into the doing, so to speak? Yes. Because mm-hmm. it's not an either or. Being and doing are happening all the time, but let's be more intentional about those values. And then that links to something I already mentioned, right? Just a simple check-in mm-hmm. when we're coming into... Um, an interaction with one another, whether it be in Zoom, in person, however, and right. building that trust and being intentional about building the trust. And as part of that, also have a check out. Hey, what are you taking away? What's the most useful learning that you had from this conversation? Yeah. That sort of thing. And then how are we also taking these sorts of things like values, check-ins, relationship building, engaging with each other through deeper listening mm-hmm. into our other worlds? Yeah. Right. Outside of the organization, our private world and our personal world. Right. And and not just practice it when we're, you know, together in the company, because yeah. this is what the boss told me that I have to do. <laughs> right. Exactly. So expanding it out, I think is really important. Like, can you imagine like if you're a parent and you have children listening to them in a different way, what yeah. could that do? Not just for the interaction parent child, but for the child itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I do like like when you, you're in a meeting and the um, the person who is conducting the meeting actually uses your name, you know, mm-hmm. and so when you're talking, you know, they'll be like, oh, that's a great idea, Stacy, you know, or, you know, and you feel recognized, you feel a, a, a sense of importance because they, you know, when they're talking, they, they've included you or they remember you or, the, you know, and it, and it kind of makes the person, I think, feel good too, instead of just sitting there and you're just being left lectured, you know, and, and, you know, in that sense also. Absolutely. Yeah. Being acknowledged through uh, the person's name, I think is a really valuable way to engage where people, they feel seen. Yeah. So that's a really good point, Stacey. (laughs) (laughs) I think, you know, um, you know, what are some ways that you feel that um, bosses and CEOs and people in charge could, you know, change some of their behaviors so they can start to be mentored if they're not being mentored already? I think if we can pay attention maybe to the worldview that we're holding 
along with some of the mindsets that we have, because it's those mindsets and the combination of them that inform that worldview. Yeah. And I think oftentimes, again, like if we go back to our school days, at least here in the, in the U S mm -hmm. again, we're taught to have the right answer. Because yeah. when we get a series of correct answers, we get the A. Yes. And when we get the A, we're better and we know more. And so, you know, fill in the blank. Right. What if we could just hold that and reframe it a little bit yeah. to instead of me having the right answer all the time, what if I could help someone have more right answers themselves? Yeah. Or even more interestingly, what if I could create spaces where there were more diverse points of views and perspectives? Mm -hmm. so that I could learn and from that maybe come up with a different solution or a different answer that might even be more effective than the one I think I know. Yeah. So I, I think one of the key things is to shift the worldview or at least be open and curious yeah. about creating a space or just a little opening of the door to where mm -hmm. I don't have to have the right answer. And I know that's hard for a lot of senior leaders, at least in, yeah. in my work. Right. So teaching people to come into any sort of situation or interaction from a place of beginner's mind, like, gosh, it could give me freedom not to know and instead just be there to learn. Mm -hmm. And then the sum of the parts kind of phenomenon, right? Where the collective yeah. knowing, the collective wisdom becomes the thing that creates the next new innovation that, you know, sends your company, you know, virally into the you know, you the universe in a way where you're, you're really clicking on all uh, cylinders. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I find that when I was working with many CEOs or I was working with many people that were in charge of large groups of people, they, you know, some of them were kind of stuck in their old mm -hmm. ways. And as time is evolving, people are changing, people's thoughts and their mindset are, is changing. You have, sometimes you have these people who are in charge that are still thinking, like, you know, it's 10 years ago, you know what I mean? Like they, they're, they're so stuck in their old behaviors and they're not really thinking out of the box and they're continuing to do things. And then they're wondering why things aren't working, you know, the way they want them to. But, you know, when you bring it up to them, sometimes they, they're listening, but you don't know if they're really listening, you know what I mean? Because that's all they know, you know, that's the way they were taught. That's what they continue to do. But life has changed people are changing and if you see now this new generation their mindset is completely different than our mindset you know and there are a lot of good things that you know this this generation you know you hear people complaining about the new generation but they have a great mindset that you know a lot of the things that you know they're a lot more open-minded than we were you know and it's just because of the generations we were brought up and the family you know we cycle you know, and so as time changes, as technology changes, as the world changes, people's mind change, you know, I think people, bosses and people in charge have to have a more open mindset too, and have to be willing to, to change. Now, do you find in your field, because you coach so many, you know, corporate executives and CEOs and people in charge, do you find that a lot of them might still be stuck in their old ways? Or are they more come to that point where they're kind of, you, you find them more open-minded to want change? I think it's the latter for the most part. I do think people really want to be more open and they don't understand how they don't, okay. they're not equipped with the, the tools and practices that could help. And I think that's where I come in and maybe add a little bit of value mm -hmm. um, because to the points you made with regard to the younger generations, one thing that I noticed, cause I also, um, I, I, I also work with younger people and they're really lamenting for meaning in their mm -hmm. work. They really want to make a difference. They want to be in service to something that's like bigger than themselves. Yeah. And that links to what we were talking about a few minutes ago with regard to that worldview and coming in, in ways that are more open, because how could I, as a CEO, an entrepreneur, a manager, a senior leader, um, be in service to that younger generation? Yeah. Right. Because I'm probably mm -hmm. going to be gone sooner than they are. <laughs> so mm -hmm. what am I leaving behind as a way to help them cope right. with what's next for them in, in the future and right. tap into that sense of service? Because I really believe that that's how they're wired. Yeah. I believe that. At least that's what I see in my work.
with them. No, I, I agree with you. I see that also. I, I see that also. They want to see change. They want to, mm -hmm. they, they want to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. Like you said, you know, they really, you know, they see a lot of flaws and they, they want to change those flaws. And a lot of them have, if you see their behaviors and their thought pat patterns, it's a lot different than, you know, the way we were grown up to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good. You know, um, you know, I like the open-mindedness because they're open for new solutions, better solutions, you know, mm -hmm. so they are, they're willing to, to take it in, you know, and they're, they're not, they're not, you know, holding a barrier up and saying, no, this is the way I was taught. This is the way it should be. And that's that, you know, and, and I think, you know, the, the more open-minded we are, the more willing we are to accept change, the more successful I think businesses will, you know, be, you know, what are you, what is it your intake on that? I, I completely agree. And I think linked to the mindset piece in particular, and I, I want to be clear here because I don't want to give the false impression that this is only, or if I could just change my mindset. Yeah. Because we both, we have both, we, myself included, right? We have fixed mindsets mm -hmm. and the ones that uh, we get stuck in oftentimes are linked to deeper things that we have to kind of discover, uncover and unravel. Yeah. Um, and then we have growth mindsets. Right. which is um, where we want to try to lean to when we think about being more open or coming at things from beginner's mind, but they're both useful, right? If yeah. I have to hold the mindset that if I put my hand on a hot stove, mm -hmm. it'll burn. I probably want to hang on to that mindset. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> um, so it's important because for me, it's really more about the journey and it's yeah. the noticing when I yeah. notice, ah, oh, Susan, thought you worked that one out, dude, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. It's still there, right? It's still there. Yeah. Um, it's the noticing though, that I think really makes the difference. And what I try to help my clients do and do it in ways that feel easy and mm -hmm. trusting self and in flow because we're mm -hmm. all human and we all go through the same stuff. We just don't think we do. I think oftentimes right. we compare ourselves behind the scenes to kind of like the high reel <laughs> yeah. or the movie version, right? Of another person. And yeah. uh, it just, it's just not like that, I promise. <laughs> No, you know, I, I, that's like one of the biggest problems in all industries is that people will compare themselves to people that let's say they've just gotten the business in the first five years and they compare themselves to someone that's been in the business for over 30 years. And like you said, or they, they look at someone who has celebrity status, but that's completely different world, you know, and it's, and it's not, you know, you can't compare yourself to someone that's been in the business like 30 something years and think that you should be on the same level. You're not going to be on the same level, but maybe, you know, if you mentor that person and you look at what they're doing and what they did in the past, you can grow to get to that level, you know, and learn from them and, men, you know, and make them one of your mentors. But, you know, people have to realize that you can't compare yourself to the people next to you because you two different people, two different journeys in life. And you're, you're never going to have the same experiences because you're just a different person. Your mindset might be different, you know, but we can learn from people that are above us, you know, and excel in, in that respect. Do you feel the same way? I do. I do. In fact, um, a lot of the work that I've been engaged in for over three decades is creating what we call learning organizations for the very reasons that you just shared. How can we take um, what's different about us and create that learning opportunity through our work and through the business itself to come together in different ways. And um, again, do it in a way where we slow things down a bit so that we can listen yeah. as a way to understand. And as part of that notice, link to the noticing piece, notice the assumptions I'm holding. Yeah. Notice the points of view. And especially when those points of view are diverse, Mm -hmm. put them out there to examine yourself and for others to examine so we can learn from the difference. Exactly. Like that's the key because, and learn and, and put them out there in a way where we're not defending that point of view, especially when we feel really strongly about it. Right. Because when yes. we defend, we divide. Yes. But when we can hold the diverse opinions and views and experiences, that's when we create harmony. Oh, 100%. and that's what I want businesses to be. I want businesses to be harmonious, safe spaces where we go yes, to work, to earn a living and get meaning out of that because we're learning, we're listening, we're engaging and we're interacting in, in ways that, that feels so fulfilling. Yes, 
A hundred percent. And I wish people understood that more because a lot of times people get defensive, even with constructive mm-hmm. criticism, they get, sure. they go on the defense right away. And if we, we just listen and we just, you know, we acknowledge what they say and we don't take it as a de- offensive, you know, we don't, we don't take it as defensive, you know, cause someone, you know, if they're, if they're saying it in a nice way, if they're trying to get their point across, you know, listen to them, you know, and sometimes people do have a, a hard time communicating and they don't have those communication skills even though they might be the sweetest person on the planet sometimes they just don't communicate well and and take that into retrospect and 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 take it in and say okay that person you may not be saying it the greatest way to me but what message are they trying to get across and if we could take a deep breath and just like listen for a second and then come back and communicate and maybe later on when everyone's at a at a better level of calmness say you know next time we have an issue could you please talk to me in this respect you know because it you know that the way you said that you know kind of made me feel this way but I understand what you say and I respect what you say but maybe next time you could say it a little bit differently if we just were able to communicate we would maybe have that you know, harmonious effect that you're talking about, you know, I don't know how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think what you're saying is gold. And and the way I would phrase it uh, with regard to, let's say, a sort of strategy that we might mm-hmm. consider is yeah. assume positive intent, always assume positive intent. Mm-hmm. I don't think at least in my small corner of the universe that um, the majority of people I come into contact with are out to harm or hurt me. Yeah. Right? But when we're fueled, to your point, when we're fueled or we're scared and that emotion is like, you know, vibrating through our body, sometimes it's challenging um, to to speak in ways that might be more gentle Mm -hmm. um, or be perceived as more loving. So what I heard you say that I think is just so, again, fundamental is assume positive intent, always assume positive intent until we learn otherwise. Right. And it's, it's simple. It's almost like, okay. Long, long, long ago, we all thought that the world was flat and that was the belief, (laughs) right? Until guess what? We discovered actually, no, it's not, Mm -hmm. right? So always assume positive intent until you discover, well, actually with this person, I have too much history and too many experiences to suggest otherwise. Right. And then you're probably not in relationship with that person if you're being healthy and taking care of yourself, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Now, when you when you go into these um, facilities and you go into in these businesses, now is this a consistent um, um, uh, coaching um, that you need to constantly do and stay up with, or these tre- you, you you teach strategies and you teach techniques to people that will they could actually utilize after they've learned it, after they've learned how to incorporate, incorporate it, after you see them actually doing it and they are capable of doing it by themselves. You know, are, are these these strategies and tools that you teach are like lifelong strategies and tools that they could actually naturally incorporate into their life if they have the willingness to take time to learn it. And then it just comes in naturally. And after a while, they probably don't even realize, but they've improved their behavioral skills and they've improved their way of communicating with a group of people and they can just move on and, and just have that that healthy space that you're talking about, that safe space at work. Yes. And sometimes it takes, you know, longer than um, it might take in, in a different situation. So for me, I'm just really, really keen to meet people where they are mm-hmm. with regard to the coaching. I, I do that one-on-one. I do that with teams. And then I do it with multiple teams because I have this idea in mind where we can link the me, the we, and the us. Yeah. And when we do that in a way that feels harmonious, it actually, to your point, has the ripple out effect. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of times people tend to fragment or separate who they are or think they should be at work and who they are and think they should be at home. When yeah. in fact, we're the same person. Mm-hmm. And whether we're conscious of it or not, we are behaving in very similar ways. Right. So um, I don't believe in coaching anyone less than six months, especially Mm -hmm. when we're dealing with mindsets. I mean, these are things that are ingrained um, in our first seven, eight years of life, these beliefs. So Mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a while to unravel those, but depending on where people are, I'll go years, I'll go months, and I won't stay too long because if I am, then I'm not doing my job. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) At some point, you know, you have to equip and then feel like you're equipped 
because I don't want to be the the thing that people kind of latch on to for the safety blanket, right? Yes, yes, They yes. can take what they've learned, they bring it home, they bring it to their communities and it does have a ripple out effect that that I'll never know about. And I just think that's really cool. It's a cool aspect yeah. of the work actually. And I think you said something really important because when you mentioned, I can't tell you how many people are like, well, it's two different worlds. And at, when I'm at home, I act like this. And when I'm at work, I act like this. And I can't tell you how many people they divide, they think they divide themselves, you know, because mm -hmm. like, I won't do this X, Y, and Z. I, I'll behave like this when I'm home and I'll behave like this when I'm at work. And it's two different worlds. And they, they, in their mind, in their, in their, in their mindset, they separate the two. So, you know, what do you think about, I know you just went over it, but like mm -hmm. overall, you know, what do you want people to really understand about that, that mindset? What I would, like people to really consider and understand about that mindset is that I hear in that a lot of shoulda, coulda, wouldas, mm -hmm. what I should be, who I'm supposed to be, what I could be. Right. Whereas what I try to do as we kind of peel away the layers of the onion, so to speak, yes. to get to the core. And what I mean by that is my authentic self. Mm -hmm. Cause I can be in a job and not feel fulfilled. Why is it not feeling fulfilling? Because yeah. it's not tapping into my heart, to my soul. Yeah. Right. And so when we get to the place where we've, again, stripped away some of those layers and we're at that authentic core, then there is no separation. Yeah. And I think we have a lot of masks. And I think that's one thing, frankly, that COVID taught us when we were wearing those masks right? We were hiding behind certain things and all you could see were the yeah. eyes yeah. and the ears. Yeah. So that was very symbolic to me with regard to the work that, that I do with others because we pretend a lot. And especially in business, my experience is that no one really likes the non-pretender. No one really likes yeah. someone who's going to challenge and show up authentically. And yeah. yet that's what we have to do if we're going to tap into those values. Otherwise we're not being authentic about those either. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do we create that space where we really just show up and realize that we're going to make mistakes, we're going to fall, but you get up again and again and yeah. again. And then as you're working on that, stripping away again, these layers, there's nothing more fulfilling yeah. than authentically making money in ways that build healthy relationships. And yeah. by the way, all this links to our health physically, emotionally, oh, and otherwise, right? hundred percent. They say 70% of all illnesses are caused by stress. Absolutely. I believe that. I believe in dis-ease. When I am mm -hmm. in dis-ease with my authentic self, when I am out of alignment with who I am and the gifts that I bring that are unique to me, that's yes. when I get sick. Yes. Me too. Me yeah. too. Now, if you had to take today, if you had to take everything we talked about, what are some important factors that you'd like to emphasize to people today, to our listeners? So always assume positive intent. <laughs> 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 I want to say that again. Um, the ideas around listening, I think, are, are very, very important. And I would say the underpinning of all of what we've talked about, if we could just find a way however that is for ourselves to yeah. take life a little less seriously, like be mm -hmm. playful, find yeah. ways to have fun. That, yes. that wonderment we had as a child, how do we rejuvenate that in ourselves? Yeah. Because we're all in it together, even though we feel so alone, we're yeah. all in it together. We are so much more similar than different. Yes. So what could it be to just honor my imperfections right. and realize I'm in it with, you know, what, 7 billion other people or however many people are on the planet. I don't even think yeah, I yeah. know, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but just, yeah, have some ease and grace on yourself yeah. and be willing to work with a coach or a mentor, whoever that is, right. um, or some sort of program that, that resonates with you to, to, to help you get over some of those barriers so that you can take the limiting beliefs and, and turn those into limitless potential and, uh, and live your life in a way that like, I want people to fall madly in love with their life. Yes. That, that's like my, my deepest wish for, for everyone. 
I, I like that wish and I hope <laughs> I hope that wish does come true because I think if you could really fall in love with your authentic self and you can really be happy with who you are and you could look in the mirror and like who you see, just imagine all the good you can do in this world, you know, if you have that mentality. That is so important. I think that's a very good po point. Now, what are some of the services that you provide to people? Thanks for asking, um, Stacy. So I, I do a lot of coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I also have group coaching programs. Um, they're fundamentally based in aligning our inner culture with the outer culture, whatever culture yeah. that is, whether it's business, personal, private. Mm -hmm. um, and I also do a lot of online programs um, fundamentally based in mindset work, right. um, but uncovering that and, and, and not just creating strategies, but from the customized strategies that you want to create for your yeah. life and business, right. creating also practices and tools, like mm -hmm. we were saying earlier that, that you can utilize practically yes, to have impact immediately. Right. Right. It's not like we're going to have to go through five years of coaching to know yeah. we're doing this in real time and it's unfolding with, with, with each step. Right. Um, right now I've got a new program that's called reignite your spirit. It links to oh, what like we were just that. talking about, yeah. right. About falling in love with our life. And I work with entrepreneurs and um, senior executives who, gosh, they've made it to the top or they've created the business that they, that they love. And yet they kind of get there and they're like, is that all there is? Like there's this yeah. kind of letdown in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we rejuvenate all of that and reignite their right. spirit in, in ways that touch their, their heart and soul and, and tap into their true authenticity to live the life of their dreams? I love it. I love that. That's so special. Now, where can people find you on the internet? So I have a LinkedIn account. Um, I have a website. I've got uh, an Insta account. So different social media. Uh, I'm on Facebook a little bit. Um, but but mostly uh, through my websites, through vehicles like this. And again, I'm so grateful to have been invited um, to this conversation. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but predominantly LinkedIn and I think Instagram and and then just reaching out to me through my website or through uh, different links that might be available. And to people. What's your website address? It's um, generoninternational.com, G-E-N-E-R-O-N, -E international, all spelled out, dot com. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that in the description so we'll make sure everybody has it. Thank you. Well, this has been amazing. I, I am so glad you came on. I think it's so important because in today's society, we see so many, you know, businesses going downhill, you know, you know, COVID put an impact on our, on our lives. And then afterwards, you know, you know, people's personalities, you know, things have changed so much in the workforce. And, you know, you find that there is a lot of difficulty with a lot of businesses struggling to make ends meet, you know, even corporate businesses, you know, you know, businesses that have been here forever are now struggling, you know, and the question is why, you know, if, if we change certain things, if we changed, you know, the safe space, if we change their, the culture going on, you know, could that have an impact, you know, and sometimes people don't think about that, you know, it's not always about the product. It's not always about how you sell the product. It's about the people working behind you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the product and people that who make it happen. Now, if we can really communicate and make everyone a whole, like we were talking about and give the, and create that safe space, you know, mm -hmm. would those businesses thrive, you know, and that's a question we should all ask ourselves that, you know, have businesses and, and want to see their businesses thrive and not just survive, you know, let's look at that, that safe space and see what we can do, because I think that safe space has a huge impact on how businesses really, you know, become a thriving business and they not just thrive, you know, survive in each week by week. But I think everything you said today had so much value, so much great information you provided today. I love, you know, all the different tools and techniques and suggestions that you made today it was phenomenal. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. You've been just a, a wonderful guest and I hope we can, you know, have you back on the show. You're just a great person to talk to with wonderful ideas. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Stacey. Deeply, deeply appreciated. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too.